Good evening everyone and welcome to this, now the third recorded midweek message. Hopefully wherever you're watching this or listening to it, uh, this finds you well. One of the dangers I think we all face during this time of disconnectedness as a church family is the danger of spiritual drifting. In Proverbs 27, 17, we read that as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. This is a proverb that teaches us that the presence of other Christians is actually something that sharpens us, that helps us to grow. Uh, there, are, there is great preservative force and great shaping force in just us gathering together week by week as a church family to worship God and to hear his word. It preserves us, it keeps us from drifting away from God. And so while we can't just meet in the same way at the moment, I, I just feel a burden that there's uh, a temptation there for us to just kind of coast during these weeks and months. And so for that reason, uh, I just want to read one verse tonight and make it the focus of this little devotional reflection. And that verse is from Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 9. As you turn there, let me remind you of the context. Moses is speaking to the Israelites just before they settle down into the promised land. And he's recounting the journey that they have been on over the past 40 years through the wilderness. He's reminding them of the law. Deuteronomy literally means second law. This is Moses recounting everything to remind the people just before they go into the land of their identity. They're a people redeemed for a relationship with God, called to obedience, a treasured possession, and a people with an incredible purpose to declare the greatness and the excellence of God to the nations all around them. And so in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9, we read this warning and exhortation from Moses to the people. Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. Moses knows that as his people settle down into comfort in the land of Canaan, there will be a great temptation for them just to drift spiritually. Through the wilderness, I guess there was an acute sense that the people needed God. The manna each day reminded them that God was their provider. As they didn't know where they were going and they just followed the pillar of cloud and fire, they learned to just follow God wherever he would lead them. But he knew that, Moses knew that when the people would settle in the land and the manna would cease and the pillar uh, of cloud and fire would no longer be so visibly present to guide them in the same way, he knew the people could just settle down, get comfortable in their homes, and that they could just forget the Lord, their need of him, and just drift away. And so in Deuteronomy 4, 9, I think there are three parts to this warning that Moses gives that I think is really instructive for us as we face the same temptation at the moment while we're a bit disconnected to drift away from the Lord. The first thing Moses says is simply this, take care. Take care. I think this is commanding a certain attitude that we should have at the moment. An attitude of self-watchfulness. We are to keep a close watch over our souls, over ourselves at the moment. Time and time again, we see this taught across the pages of Scripture. Jesus said, for example, in Luke's Gospel 21, 34, watch yourselves lest you be weighed down. And he was speaking in the context there of challenging times, saying, watch yourselves in case you're weighed down by it all. The Apostle Paul said to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4.16, keep a close watch on yourself, Timothy, and on your teaching. So this principle of self-watchfulness is really important. Actually, in the first message of this year, 2020, I said I really wanted us as a church to practice self-watchfulness this year, keeping a close watch on our souls to make sure that we're doing okay spiritually. We keep an eye on our cars. We give them a checkup before they go for MOT. We keep, if we're wise, we uh, look after our teeth, our bodies, our physical health. 
It's just the same with our souls. There should be an attitude of mind at the moment. During this time of uncertainty and disconnectedness, I'm going to purpose to keep a close watch on my soul so that I don't get weighed down, drift away and lose my confidence in the Lord. So the first thing Moses says is, take what, take care, keep a close watch on yourself. And then he says, the second part of verse 9 is, keep your soul diligently. Now, I think, again, this is a helpful instruction for us at the moment. We have got to keep our souls well. We have a garden out the back here. Uh, I know sometimes all of you are just waiting for Hudson Elliot Grace to pop their wee heads up behind me in this window. Thankfully, so far, that hasn't happened, but... Who knows? It's not It's not really in my control all the time. But we have this garden out there and it takes uh, care. If I don't care for it, if I don't keep it, it'll overgrow. There'll be weeds, there will be thorns, uh, everything will get out of control. It's just the same with our spiritual lives, with our souls. We've got to keep our souls diligently. In fact, I love to imagine my spiritual life like a garden. And I'll often pray and say, Lord, right now as I step into the garden of my soul, my spiritual life, I see thorns growing, um, maybe some of the things that I'm struggling with. And I imagine a nice pond in the middle and instead of it being clean, I'll see, oh, there's a bit of algae growing there. And and I actually use that kind of uh, biblically informed imagination to help me uh, take care of my own spiritual life. And you know yourself, uh, if you're growing anything and caring for a garden, growing plants, they need certain things to thrive. For example, they need... Uh, Food, you need to feed uh, plants. We need to feed our souls at the moment. If there's anything I could really exhort you to just now during this period of self-isolation, it would be to just get more scripture into your blood. Take reading your Bible seriously during this time. If you have a little bit more time on your hands, as some of us do, then just take time to read your Bible. That means you're going to need a plan. You're going to need to think through what you're reading. So, for example, maybe you're, you're out of the practice of reading your Bible regularly. Maybe it would be helpful for you to just say, I'm just going to start at the gospel. And I'm just going to try and behold in account after account the glory of Christ. Or maybe if, if you want to jumpstart your prayer life to some degree and you've got out of the pattern of praying regularly, maybe you'd find it helpful. Just start at Psalm 1 and just a psalm a day as you read and purpose to engage with God during this time. Well, as as you read your Bible, you're also going to need uh, to help from God's Spirit. And just like a garden needs food, it also needs water. If you want to grow your soul, you need water. And by that, I mean, seek the help of the Holy Spirit during this time. Um, we need the Holy Spirit to just pour that living water into our lives afresh. So that as we read our Bible, as we seek the Lord, he will Make the word come alive in us and he will cause our hearts to and minds to understand what we're reading and to be actually moved deep in our affections by what we read. Sometimes this is very forceful as we read our Bibles and we really experience the nearness of God. And other times we read and we don't seem to draw as much out of it, but we persevere and with discipline uh, and perseverance, we keep going. But we need the food of God's word. We need the water of God's spirit. We also need sunlight. Just like this garden needs light if it's going to grow, we need to open the windows and let light into our lives. And by this I mean prayer. We need to pray and just let the the, the light of God's face just shine upon us. Um, maybe, Maybe you've been too busy in the past to find good time for prayer. And maybe things have slowed down somewhat. Now, I know that won't apply to all of us, but for many it will. Maybe you could just say, I'm just going to try and pray more. Again, it takes both discipline and organisation. You need to think through adoration, confession, thanksgiving, how you're going to supplicate and intercede for others. You might want to find a system that helps you to organise yourself. Even look through maybe your members directory and pray through a page a day. You might find that a helpful way to pray for our members at the moment. But let that light of God's presence in as you pray and seek his face. And then you need, uh, finally, uh, a good environment if you're going to grow. And this is difficult at the moment because usually you would say that this would be our church and our gathering. But I would just say purpose to stay connected in some way at the moment by watching these videos, uh, by picking up the phone and perhaps calling uh, a Christian friend or a brother or sister, a Christian brother or sister in the fellowship. 
just purpose to engage. Don't sit back and then say, oh, I'm just so alone at the moment. Take initiative. That might be a reality, that loneliness, but try if you can to take initiative and find ways to stay connected where possible. Keep your soul diligently. It needs the food of the word, the, the water of the spirit, the light of prayer, and then this trying to be interconnected and to have an environment in which we can grow and try to offset some of the effects of this isolation. So we're to have this attitude of self-watchfulness. Second, we're to keep our souls diligently. We're to engage and purpose to grow during this time through all the means that I've just explained. And then the third thing that Moses says here simply is, don't forget to remember. Do you see what he says? He says, take care, keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, unless they depart from your heart all the days of your life. You know, I've said this before, we're like leaky buckets. The truth of God flows into our hearts and it can so quickly just drip out. And we need to be filled up continually, continually with the truth of God's word and with the water of God's spirit. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1, the writer to the Hebrews said, We must pay closer attention, therefore, to what we've heard, lest we drift away from it. Did you hear that exhortation? Pay more close attention to what we've heard, lest we drift away from it. One of the ways we protect ourselves from drifting away from God is by paying close attention to the gospel. This means perhaps you'll purpose to listen to some sermons uh, from our website over the past uh, number of years, or perhaps from other good Bible teachers that you like to listen to. Maybe you'll choose to set aside time to just study a book of the Bible with a commentary in more detail. All of these things are important to keep you remembering the gospel, remembering the truths that are so dear to us and understanding that in God's word we're taught by paying careful, close attention to the truths we have learned for so many years. This will protect us from spiritual drifting. So I pray that this little reflection will be helpful for you uh, as you, you gather, whether it's by the Zoom chat afterwards or whether you just take time wherever you are to just pray for a few moments after you listen to this little message. But remember, take care. Keep your soul diligently, lest you forget uh, everything uh, that you have learned down through the years. Let's work to stay close to God. Let's purpose to engage and let's seek to grow and be fruitful during these days. Let me just pray uh, as I close. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this uh, little thought this evening. Thank you for this exhortation that we would just keep a close watch on ourselves. Lord, we don't want to drift away from you during these, these days. And um, so many of the means of grace uh, the gathering, the exhortation, the challenge of gathering to hear your word, to pray and sing truth to you and to one another. So many of these things have just been adjusted and we can't gather physically like we love to. But, but just now during these days, would you protect and preserve us as a great Vic family, individually and corporately? Protect us from drifting away, from coasting. Make this, Father, a time of great spiritual fruitfulness for us. Protect our mental health during these days of isolation. Protect the anxiety levels. And please fill us with your truth, with your love, with your steadfast goodness day in and day out. Help us to stay connected. Help us to have an appetite for your word. And during this time that we would see your word just seep down more deeply into the, the deepest fibres of our being. So that life would spring up in our hearts in amazing new ways. We just commit all our cares to you, all of our needs across our church family. You know them all, Father, and we just lay and cast all our cares on you and before you now, and we thank you that you care for us. So guide us, Lord, as we go on from here, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. Thanks for listening.